Hey y'all, welcome to my kitchen here at my table at three. Today I am going to show you how to make a low carb, keto, trim healthy mama, basically a gluten free pizza out of the, um, what people know as the fat head cheese dough. I've just made a twist to mine. Today I'm going to show you how to make that crust and finish it off with a breakfast pizza that your whole family will love for breakfast or for dinner. So let's jump back. I made the crust earlier this morning. Let's jump over there and I'll show you how to do that. Then we'll come back and I'll show you how to build your pizza. Alright, so we're going to get this going. I'm going to show you how I do this on the stove. We're going to add our ingredients first, which I'm going to put in... Uh, Two cups of shredded cheese, mozzarella is what works best I found in this. You can use cheddar if you're going for a different, but it's a little bit greasier, so I use the uh, low moisture part skin mozzarella because I think that um, I put a little bit more in there just for good measure because I didn't fill up one of those cups. <clears throat> All right, I made a mess. I'm gonna feed that. There. Okay, and so that and then the next thing we're going to do is it does call for a little bit of cream cheese the cream cheese kind of helps it melt and bind together makes it more creamy and i am just going to put that in there remember i'm linking to my recipe that i used below but that is probably about i don't know one to two ounces of cream cheese <clears throat> two tablespoons basically is what it is and when you get this on the stove, you're going to turn it on so high so that it starts. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit. Let's see if you can do that. There we go. So it starts melting. You also want to have your other ingredients nearby. Now, you can absolutely do this on the um, in the microwave. That's how most people do it. I have a, you might have seen some of my videos. I do have a microwave above my stove, but it has not worked in two years. And I just have not replaced it. So... I've learned to do everything on the stove. So yeah, so before you start doing this, I want you to have your egg and your dry mixture, which I use a mixture of almond flour and a little bit of oat flour, oat fiber, sorry, not oat flour. Um, so I like the texture of that. It gives it more of a crusty, bready feel when you're, you know how almond flour can be if you used it. Another thing you need to have ready too is your um, cooking spray or oil, anything that you're going to use to roll it out. Have your rolling pin ready and some wax paper. Um, the reason I say that it's better to be prepared uh, so that when you have your crust, crust ready to mix, you can take it off the heat. You can add the egg, you can add your dry. I actually do it reverse. Let me say it different. I use my dry first, then add the egg so the heat from the pan does not cook the egg okay so you don't want that and this actually is slower than a microwave yes i understand that if you want to use a microwave then go for it <clears throat> someone even asked me one time if it could be de de la la sorry somebody even asked me one time if it can be done in the oven melting the cheese and i'm sure it can i've never tried it but i'm sure it can so i'm gonna let this melt a little bit and just stir it every once in a while and you can see, you can see how it's already starting to melt. And now in my crust, a lot of times I like to put seasoning in my dry mix. If I'm making a pizza, I'll put maybe Italian seasoning in there, garlic powder, onion powder. You can leave it plain or even a little bit of pow um, Parmesan cheese in there would be really good. Just flavor it however you want to because, you know, flavor every level of every step of the recipe okay so i'm going to let this sit a second don't ever walk away but i can you know let it sit for a second just so it melts and i'm going to give that just a few minutes and i'm going to time it and i'm going to come back in just a few minutes i don't want you guys to wait uh, i'll come back in just a few minutes and i'll show you and tell you how long it took um, to get to the softness that we need to mix in the dry ingredients so be right back all right, guys, so we've been going about two or three minutes. It's almost there. You can see it coming together. It looks like this. You can't see the shreds anymore, and all of the cream cheese is melting. So here what I'm going to do is kind of push, spread it out, scoop it up, because you want this to be as mixed 
and as melty as possible because you're fixing to mix in these dry ingredients and you want it to um, be incorporating so and you don't want your heat up so high that it's going to burn your cheese either now if you get a little bit of color in your cheese that's fine you can pull it out or you can just leave it in but yeah okay so i'm gonna turn the heat off i'm gonna leave it in here a few more minutes see what it looks like See how stretchy and smooth that looks? Doesn't that look good? Ooh. Okay, so I took this off of the heat, and you want to take it off the heat. Now, hopefully you guys can still see. Let me do this. Let's see here if I can get you at a different angle here. Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better in it. Can't see in the pan, but you can see it's still stretchy. You're going to have to move fast here, but if it does seize up on you a little bit, just put it back on the burner, heat it up a little bit more. So first, remember I told you dry ingredients, which I usually do about three-fourths cup of almond meal to one to two tablespoons of oat fiber. Now, if you don't have the oat fiber, you can totally leave it out. It's not the same as oat fiber. I'm sorry. Yes, it is. <laughs> oat fiber is not the same as oat flour. We're going to add our egg. And here's what we're going to mix like crazy. Here's what it looks like now. We're going to just mix it like crazy with this spatula. Because you're trying to incorporate all the dry in with the cheese. Now in a minute I'm going to spray my hands and use my clean hands. It is hot so be careful you do that. But I found it's the best way to really incorporate the dry into the cheese. So first I'm just going to get the egg mixed in all this dry off my spatula into the mixture and go again and it is takes a little work okay so here's where I'm gonna get dirty with my hands remember I wash my hands I have clean hands still gonna use some cooking spray spray both of my hands okay then I'm gonna take this out this is what it's looking like right now. You can see the dry ingredients. You see the almond flour still mixed in there? Okay. This is kind of warm, so we're just going to work with it. Work with it. And work all the dry ingredients into the cheese. You can see it's going in there. There's still some. The goal is to get it all worked in if you can. Because you want a smooth dough. I'll let you guys see me knead it for a little bit. You can see it's just a little bit left. It's getting in there. And you may have to spray your hands again. No big deal. Just spray them and keep kneading. You can totally do it with your KitchenAid if you'd like to. Just I would have some spray handy for sure. Okay, look at that. See how that is very well mixed. You don't see any of those big lumps again. All right, give me just a second. I'll be right back. I'm going to rinse my hands just for really quick. Thank you, honey. And let me grab. All right, clean up a little bit. My dough is just in there resting. At this point, you can kind of give it a minute. It's not going to hurt. I'm going to spray my hands one more time. Okay. And it may feel a little sticky or a little, um, you know, not like it's going to hold together. If you, But if you give it some time, it's going to set. Look at that. No dry stuff. Yeah. So now what you're going to do is I like to spray some wax paper and put this on there and let it sit for a few minutes. I'll spray the ball and let it sit just for a little bit so it has time to dry a little bit and get less sticky. And then you can roll it out for your pizza. Okay, so I started to roll this out, but I thought I would show you. So I sprayed this wax paper really good. Now if you want to, to be extra careful, you can put another piece of wax paper, like lay it over the top, spray both of them. But this is my old rolling pin that's been in our family 
I don't know, really long time. It was my nanny, so yes, it looks beat up and wore out, but it's clean, guys, so don't freak on me, okay? It just brings back a lot of memories when I use it, and I like to be able to use the same thing uh, her and my mom have used over the years. So I'm just going to roll this out to a circle since we're doing pizza, so you can turn it. See, if you spray your rolling pin really well, you don't even have to use that top layer. Let me move all this out of the way. So you guys can scoot it over this way so I can show you. Let's see. There we go. So mainly you just want to decide if you want thick crust or thin crust. Um, if you're going to want a round pizza, square pizza. Really you can make it whatever you want to at this point. This is the same way I do when I make my pinwheels. If you haven't seen my sausage cream cheese pinwheel, I will link that recipe below. I have a video here. Alright, so. And you guys, I don't go for perfection. I know it's going to taste good even though it's not perfectly round. But now I am just going to get this out on my pizza pan here. That's just cheap pizza pans <laughs> that I pick up from the Dollar Tree. When they get too yucky looking, I throw them out and grab some more. Um, so there we go. Alright guys, so you saw how I done that crust. I did get it onto the pizza pan here and then I put it in a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven and baked it for about 10 to 12 minutes just slightly because what you want to do is kind of set it so that it won't be soggy when you put your toppings on. Now we're going to pan down. I'm going to show you what we top our pizza with. Now this pizza is totally customizable to your breakfast favorites. Today we're going to be using scrambled eggs from our hens outside. Some onions, red and half of a green bell pepper that I have here and half of a red bell pepper that I've sauteed. And you can saute it in Pam or a little bit of bacon fat, whatever you'd like to, or put it on there raw, however you like it. And then I have some bacon here um, that I fried and had, um, and we'll just kind of crumble it up. Shortcut tip there, if you don't want to fry your bacon um, and have to do this, uh, you can also get those real bacon crumbles from Sam's, Costco, or even your Walmart. And use those but yeah and this is crispy so we could just crumble it up and put it on top don't like bacon you can use um, breakfast sauces absolutely just cook it drain it really well and use that if you don't eat pork use turkey bacon turkey sausage or leave it off and just have the veggies and your eggs okay so this is a crust that we've taken out of the oven pre-cooked remember I said and I'm gonna put the link to the full recipe below so don't worry about writing anything down we like to top ours with a homemade Alfredo sauce, or if you don't have that, you can use just a jar Alfredo sauce. If you're going for keto numbers or True Melty Mama on plan, you want to make sure the one you're using is low in carbs and no crazy ingredients in it. So use your favorite here. You can also use the red sauce if you want to. I'm just not a fan of red sauce, even on regular pizza, um, especially breakfast. So this is an Alfredo you could use gravy oh my word <laughs> nathan my 13 year old says gravy belongs on everything so definitely use some white gravy if you want to that would be delicious all right so we just want to put that on there then i'm going to use just a little bit of cheese as a base today i'm using a mix of mozzarella and cheddar because uh, we like cheddar with our eggs you could use all cheddar you could use all mozzarella just whatever you want colba jack pepper jack whatever right Okay, then we're going to take our eggs and just kind of put them on there and spread them out. Um, one thing I will tell you is when you scramble your eggs, I would say don't cook them all the way. I know it sounds gross, but you want them to be a little bit runny because you don't want, uh, you know, you don't want overcooked, really, really overcooked spongy eggs. Who likes that? That's gross, right? And this way they're done, but they'll, so they'll cook all the way. You don't have to worry about that. But they don't also get tough and rubbery in the few minutes that we're going to melt the toppings. Because you want everything to be done here so that basically all you're doing is, you know, melting the cheese. So, then you can um, put on the onions and peppers. Let me grab another spoon. I would do it with my clean hands since it's just my family, but I don't want to gross anybody else. So, we're just going to sprinkle these onions and peppers. Again, leave them off. Change it out. If you like jalapenos with your eggs, you could do that. Sprinkle on some hot sauce. Whatever, you know, customize it. That's a great thing about recipes. I try to make them to where you can basically put them out. And yes, the onions and peppers will have 
um, some carbs. So if you want to cut back on the amount that's in the recipe, you can totally do that. All right, let me get my, all right. So now we're gonna do a little bit of the bacon, which is my favorite part. You know, who, who doesn't like bacon, right? I'm sure there might be somebody out there, but our family loves that. All right, and then we're gonna top with the rest of the cheese. This would work with a dairy-free cheese too if you wanted to use that, if you're dairy-free. Okay, so there, as much or as little cheese as you like. Okay, so there we go, and I'm gonna finish it off with the rest of the bacon. Now this is a very hearty pizza. Like when we eat this pizza, I'm gonna ask my husband who's behind the counter too, but this one I can only use to eat a couple pieces. How about you? Because it's pretty hearty. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna put that back in the oven at 375, probably for about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll tell you when it comes out. And while that's, um, while this is baking in the oven, I am gonna get this mess cleaned up. So when this comes out, I'll be able to show it to you. Let's get it cooked so we can eat. All right guys, so I just took the pizza, breakfast pizza out of the oven. It is oh so yummy. You can see most of the bacon, which you can tell that we are bacon lovers, right? So there you go. It smells amazing. Now we can just slice this. This will be plenty for our family. We'll have this pizza and probably a salad or something like that when we have this. Because with the eggs and the cheese and the bacon, it's really hearty. It's super filling. It's not just like a pepperoni or cheese pizza. But there you have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this pizza quick tip. If you're not a low-carb keto or, or terminal healthy mama and you want a fantastic uh, regular pizza crust for your family, I have tried Leanne's from Mennonite Farmhouse, and it's a wonderful, so I'll go ahead and link that. It's just a wheat beige regular homemade pizza crust. I'll put her link below if you're wanting that. And remember, this recipe to my low-carb breakfast keto pizza um, is in the description below. It's also a Trim Healthy Mama S if you follow Trim Healthy Mama. So check out that link below. I hope you and your family love this, and I'll see you guys on the next video.